rust. Everybody's a nightmare. <laughs> Whether it's on a car or a camper, it still needs to be sorted. The first thing you need to establish, is it a structural repair or is it just a cosmetic? This particular job is a cosmetic. The inspection don't require it to be welded. And so the vehicle is not new, but I'm gonna show you how we can recover from these holes. The first thing you need to do is to try and remove as much of the rust as possible. This along here will be a bit of a problem where the windscreen meets up with the bodywork. Once we've finished, we'll more than likely seal this back down again so that water doesn't enter into this point here. Now at the end of the day, the car possibly has five more years life left in it. The job we're going to do today is to last five more years. The first thing that we need to do with these holes is to create a dip around the edges to get any depth in the filler and keep the bodywork even, we need the surrounding edges drop down. The next thing we need to do is to try and get a dip inside the circle. so that we have depth with the filling compound. Unfortunately, we can't hit it with a hammer because it'll just end up distorting the rest of the bodywork. Where you need to, you can use the back end of the, of the screwdriver Some places are just a little bit too far up for me to get a bend with the other tool. If it's a small hole, then you can use just the curve of the screwdriver to give it that circular dip. Then get yourself a straight edge and use it to see how much depth of filler you're likely to be having. The more deeper the filler, the better. Now there is a curve obviously in the vehicle's roof, but at least this gives me an idea that there's sufficient filler. Now obviously we can't fill this hole as it is, otherwise the filler is just going to drop straight through. We need to put something from behind. Easy to cut, very strong, and obviously won't rust. You need to cut the shape just slightly bigger than the hole itself. Can you see the two differences? Because this is going to end up on the inside of this as the support. We're going to cut another one for here as well. Once I've cut them, I'll show you how we're going to put them in because we don't have access via the inside. This principle will apply whether it's a small hole or a big hole. The beauty about this PVC plastic is it's just so easy to cut and to shape. The side that's going to be on the upper surface, you need to roughen the top piece with sandpaper. The filler is not going to stick to anything that's smooth. So you rough up that top piece, and you put a screw in the top, which will allow you then to pop it on the inside okay you might need to trim a bit as you're going along it's a trial and error process at this point once you've got your two pieces inside already you're going to then get your compound the compound is one mix to the hundred. 
depends where you're buying it, it'll look something like that. Mix up just a little bit of the filling compound and put between your new PVC and the underside of the metal. and even possible no sanding until the top layer. In fact, I'm gonna leave that now and we'll come back when we put the top layer on. Because there's a concave on the roof, to save with the sanding, what we're going to do, a bit more of the PVC, we're going to scribe the curve of the roof Cut that scribe, and then when we fill it, we're going to use that as the template to run across the top to reduce the amount of sanding that we need. Let's see how it goes. So this now is four layers. Each layer allowed 20 minutes to dry, and it's looking really good. I'm not too concerned about the untidiness of the inside because once this sets off, I'll just trim that with a knife or a chisel or a scraper. Then that will be sanded right down with the curvature of the roof and then we'll put on a primer. We left the filler for 24 hours and it's now ready for sanding. We've got to this point without using any sandpaper whatsoever. The hardest part of these jobs is if you don't fill it right, you end up spending a lot of time sanding. We've put a support to remove the rubber, the windscreen edging. The next thing you need to work on is the concave of the roof. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a piece of wood here that's got a concave in it. And it just so happens to be the same as the roof. If you try and use a flat piece of wood or a sanding pad, you're going to need to use the motion of going to the shape of the roof. With this, I can just keep going in the same backwards and forward motion, I'm going to start with an 80 ply and I'm going to keep it as close to the filling space as possible. I don't want to scratch any of the original paintwork. It's important that while you're sanding you don't push too hard. Let the sandpaper do the work and if you can wear a mask. Once you think that you're nearly there, the best way to find out whether you've got any edges or not is to close your eyes and run your hand over it and if you don't feel anything then it's telling you that it's fine but I can feel there's an edge still on this side here so I'm going to keep sanding. You have to establish whether it's the filler that needs to go down or that you need to put more filler along this edge here. You'll start to see when you're getting down to the correct level is when you start removing paint. Until we start removing paint from around the edges of the filler, we're still not quite there. But don't remove too much. It's possible where you see the paint in between the two, that either means that the filler needs to go more down or you need to bring the filler more up with another coat. I'm hoping that we don't need to put any more filler on this, so I'm going to keep sanding until I get this kind of a pattern all the way around. 
now we've done most of it, we need to get inside of here. I can't do it with the block because the block is just too big and it's going to start interfering with this support to keep the rubber away. So it's time, now we've got the shape, it's time to get a new piece of sandpaper and a scraper and very gently it's the scraper that's going to keep it nice and flat. stage we're about 90% done. We've been very fortunate that we haven't yet had to put any more filler. I've had sitting in some water some 320 grade wet and dry. We're now going to wet and dry it down with the same block that has the concave in it and um, dry it off. And before we put any more filler on at this point it's that good that I think we're going to apply some primer see what we can see once the primer is on and then decide whether there's more filling necessary. With wet and dry, keep it clean and wet. That's why it's called wet and dry. clogs up very quickly, so keep it clean. Again, don't push hard, let the paper do the work. As you see so far, this is 95% good. If this was in a spray garage, they would have kept going down until they saw bare metal all the way around here. But because we're doing a DIY job, we want to keep as much as the factory paint on the metal as possible. Because in the garage, they'd have put three to five coats of paint all over the whole roof, and we're only doing a patch repair. So the more paint original we can keep, the better. We're now going to wipe it down with alcohol, just to get any final residue off. The alcohol evaporates, that's why we use alcohol and not water. And then we're going to give it a coat of primer, maybe three coats actually, and this should be a filler primer. A filler primer is a lot more thicker than standard primer, because when we use the filler primer, the filler primer, once we rub it down with wet and dry, will fill all the spaces between the original primer and the filler. There's a slight step there, very slight this should compensate for that. Now we've papered all the area, much larger than necessary because we don't want any overspray because we're doing this outside. Any light wind is likely to blow the after spray over the glass or the rest of the bodywork. Make sure that you shake the can very well, in fact for three minutes, to make sure that the paint is really mixed up well. Also, try to do it in temperatures over 18 degrees and not to do it in direct sunlight. It'll just dry too fast. I'm gonna put one layer or two layers on and I'll get back to you. Better to turn the can upside down and clean the nozzle out with the compressed air that's inside. If the paint blocks up the nozzle even by a little bit, it starts to leave spit marks and lump marks within the paint because it's not coming out clean. We've removed all the paper and we're now back to the 320 grade. You'll see by using it now on the primer, it's going to show us all the areas that are just slightly raised. We're going to keep rubbing this down until the edge of this spray paint here that we've just done is feathered out like this edge here. So 
So I've rubbed it down with the 320 and this has exposed all the raised areas but has filled all the pieces in between the filler. We're now going to mask it up again and because I don't need to spray inside the under the rubber anymore we've closed this off now. I'm going to respray that again. It should really be filled here a little bit better another coat of filler. So now it's all masked up we're using a different line on the edges because we don't want to keep the same thickness of primer all the way to the very one edge. Different layers is much better. So I applied two or three more coats of the primer and since one day I might have a Ferrari that needs a repair I thought it best just to improve on the little tiny holes that were there. I'm going to let that set, rub it back down and prime it again. So we filled all those little small defects. We're now going to apply two more last coats of the primer. Now the primer work is finished. We're going to take all the paper off and we're going to do the silicone or the Sikoflex underneath the rubber. We don't want to get any more water inside. Once that's sealed, tomorrow we'll wet and dry with a 1200 or even the 320 at the beginning just to get rid of any of the lines on the outer edges. The secret to getting a perfect finish with your Sikaflex or silicone is to get your masking tape and put the masking tape about one eighth or three millimeters up from the rubber. What that means is, is that there's no silicone going to appear on the paintwork higher up. As you see, we want the silicone to go under there. We have the sicker flex. And we can lower the rubber, massage in it, so that the sicker flex pokes out. Now we don't have to push it all the way down so that there's no sicker flex. It's better that we've got a sandwich in between. Ten minutes later we're taking the paper off. We're holding the paper as flat to the rubber because if I pull it up it's going to separate the rubber. You need to do this while the sicker flex or the silicone is soft otherwise it'll just tear all apart. That now can be left. The last job to be done will be tomorrow once the silicone or the sickle flex is dry is just to rub out with the 1200 or the 320 just to rub out the lines around the outside and that more or less is job done.